They labour and toil alongside us, the hard-working companions we wouldn't want to be without. I'm talking garden tools, of course. Hi, I'm Ben, and in today's video, we're going to show our tools a little love, spruce them up ready for the new growing season, and make them a smart new home to keep them organised and tidy. Look after your tools, and they will look after you. This lot need a bit of attention whipping into shape, so let's get on and do that, starting with our pruners or secateurs. And these guys are used an awful lot in the garden. The first thing, the first job is just to give them a bit of a clean, get rid of any dirt and grime that's on there. Just using a damp cloth with a bit of um, washing up liquid in there, just to help lift some of the dirt. If it's really ingrained on there, you can use a wire brush or something like that just to get any bits off. And there are also, let me just get it, these um, magic sponges that help to lift off ingrained oil as well. And that can be quite useful because you don't want plant oils on here sort of potentially passing on diseases. So you want a really good clean start. Now to sharpen a pair of pruners, you want to give them a really good grip so they're not moving around to keep it safe. And you start with the blade open like this, pointing towards you, and then imagine like you're playing a violin almost. So you can use a, um, a file like this, or a sharpening or wet stone like this one here, that's soaked in water for about 10 minutes. It needs to be wet to really work properly. I'm going to hold them open, facing me, and then make short, passes like that at the angle of the cut, working each section of the blade evenly. You might find it quite hard to get in there with a whetstone, in which case I'm going to use the file here and get in a bit easier. So simple strokes in the direction of the cuts of the blade at the right angle, same angle, and you're working each part of the blade equally, because you want a nice, even, sharp edge here. Don't force it down, just do gentle strokes, and let the sort of file do the work. There we go, I think that's just about done it. You can see the freshly exposed cutting edge here, and we've got a nice, even uh, exposure of about a millimetre or so all the way along, or one tenth of a, an inch, say. So those are good, they're ready to go. Um, I'm just gonna take off any burrs on the back by just running the file along there. There we are. Now it's all clean, it's nicely sharpened. I'm just gonna give a little bit of oil in the moving parts just to um, help it uh, sort of, um, well, keep flowing and keep moving nicely. Just need a tiny amount there. Um, ideally don't use a petroleum based oil because it's not so great around your plants. So. Just, uh, that's important. Um, you can just run it along the blade as well. So I've got a bit of kitchen towel. I'm just gonna wipe it on the blade here. That'll help protect it. And it's in the uh, moving parts there. Just uh, wiggle it a bit to get it all in there. Wipe the excess oil off. There we go, not bad, eh? Good stuff. It's really worth keeping your pruning tools nice and sharp because it gives a good, clean, precise cut. If it's blunt, it tends to uh, crush the stems and that isn't a great thing because then you invite disease. That is the real advantage of keeping them perfectly sharp. Ooh. Right, now to show some attention to our digging and some of our hand tools as well. If you keep these nice and clean with a, a sharp edge, then they're gonna glide through the soil a lot easier, which uh, makes your job um, a lot less hard work. First job is just to get rid of any dirt. So you can get rid of the worst off uh, with a wire brush, just scrape it away like that. There we are. And then use a cloth just to finish it off. If the mud is really, really ingrained, then it might benefit from soaking the head of the tool in water to sort of loosen it up and soften it up nicely. Now it's clean, I'm going to sharpen the spade here. Again, I'm gonna use a file and I'm just working down on the cutting edge of the spade like this. I 
I'm also going to run the blade up along the side because if you think about it, you want it to sort of glide into the soil um, along the sides as well. So just run it up the sides too. And now I'm just going to wipe the blade dry and then to finish it off, just a tiny speck of oil which I will rub in just to give it a bit of protective coating, especially over the winter when the air is quite damp and moist. And the final job is to give wooden handles some love too. Now um, for this I'm going to use a linseed oil and that gives it a nice, uh, well a bit of a sort of shine and uh, just gives it a nice finish. There we are. Helps protect the wood and extend the life. There we are. That is my spade good to go, ready for the next growing season. You see all those videos, don't you, of people like restoring objects, these rusty old tools and them coming out like new. It's so satisfying, isn't it? And uh, just, it's almost like they transform before your eyes into something beautiful, like the ugly duckling into a beautiful swan. That's what we're doing now. Just get all that grubby mud off and have it shining like new. Could eat your uh, breakfast with this, I reckon. Whoa. For someone who makes uh, gardening videos for a living, my selection of tools that I use day to day is actually pretty modest. And here they all are, what I consider my essential tools. Let's start with the hand tools here, the trowel and fork. These I use when I'm working in beds or my haunches at ground level to dig holes and just generally fluff up the soil. Uh, this fork here actually is, um, was given to me in about the year 2000 when I was working in Portland, Oregon as a gift. It's like a real old friend to me. I've got genuine affection for it. And I think that's the case with a lot of gardening tools. They become like our old friends. And that's why we need to show them some love from time to time. Next up are my spade and fork for digging. Although I increasingly do less of that as I like to adopt a no dig approach. Nevertheless, the spade is essential for shoveling on composts and manures onto the beds and then the fork for spearing weeds and sort of carrying them over to the compost heap. This uh, fork here is many, many years old. I've had it a long time. And in that time, I've replaced it with uh, 17 new heads and 14 handles. And I think you'll agree, it's looking as good as new because of that. Joking aside though, it is important to invest in quality tools. You want a good strong handle and shaft and a really strong union where it meets the head here so it doesn't fall apart. So it really does pay to invest in proper tools because they'll last for many decades that way. And one of my favorite tools is the hoe, nice and sharp so it glides through the weeds effortlessly. Now the next thing I've got is a garden rake here. You can see the forks are all misaligned, but it does the trick. It gets lovely, crumbly, textured soil to sow into or plant into. Then of course, there's a standard leaf rake, my essential weapon of choice for collecting all those leaves to make beautiful leaf mold. Again, missing a few tines, but you know what? It does the job. Ooh. And finally, my pruning tools. Got my pruners or secateurs, my pruning saw that is lethally sharp and can't see it all in shot because it's so long, but I've got a telescopic pruner here for reaching up right up into the um, hedges to just lop off branches. Oh, a few other things finally. Watering can, lots of various buckets dotted around the garden so I can bung the weeds in and then take them at my leisure. And of course, my trusty rickety old wheelbarrow. To make our tool rack, we're going to use a pallet. You want a nice clean one like this that's gonna be easy to work with. But if I put a tool in like this, my fork, quite inconvenient to get at it. So I'm gonna remove a couple of the horizontal boards so it's much easier to get them in and out. So I'm just gonna remove this one and this one. And for that, I'm gonna use a hammer and some good hard, heavy blows to get it off. Right, that's the horizontals off. Do watch your eyes when you're uh, flailing back and forth with the hammer here. You see these uh, screws sticking out. These just need levering out now to get it all nice and tidy. Like that. 
this rack is probably going to sit on the interior of this wall here so I want it to fit between the doors so I'm going to cut off flush against this uh, upright here so let's get started with that it's now time to paint it we're outdoors plenty of ventilation just to be on the safe side I've got a mask here and uh, let's get going With the rack all painted and dry, I'm now going to attach some hooks and screws to the front of it for our smaller tools. And there we go, it's all done. I'm gonna move this inside the shed to keep the tools from rusting. I'm really pleased with it. Of course, you could pretty it up as much as you like and add further attachments and hooks onto it to personalize it. This is great, so um, I'm chuffed. Tools may not be the sexiest things in the garden, although looking at them, I'm not so sure actually. But seriously, they make our job a lot easier, don't they? And where would we be without them? Have you got a favourite tool that I've not mentioned? If you have, let me know in the comments below. Next week, we're going to do something a bit different, actually. We're going to look at some of our favourite of your comments from the past year. It's going to be a lot of fun, I reckon. So if you don't want to miss that or any of our upcoming videos, please make sure you're subscribed and have turned on notifications. I'll catch you next time.